throwing a football, shooting a basketball, or designing a parachute are all examples of real life situations that can be modeled using equations of parabolas. Hi, my name is Tom Atwater, and today we will be exploring circles and parabolas. Let's start by discussing the general conic sections. A conic section is called that because it comes from or derived from a cone. And we can see here that for a circle, you take a cone and intersect the plane perpendicular to the axis of the cone. Whereas for an ellipse, you take a plane and you make sure it's not perpendicular, but at some other angle besides 90 degrees, and that gives you the shape of an ellipse. Then we have two other shapes that come from the cone. We have a parabola, which in this case, the plane intersects in such a way that it does not pass through both sides of your, of your cone. So we have a parabola right here. The hyperbola has a plane which lies parallel to the axis of the cone so that it intersects both the upper and lower portions of the cone, creating what we call a hyperbola. Let's look more closely at the circle. A circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point. The distance is called the, cent the radius of the circle, and the fixed point is called the center. The circle, then, has a center of hk and a radius r will have the equation quantity x minus h squared plus quantity y minus k squared equals r squared. So the example we have is x minus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared equals 4. So the center of the circle is 3 comma negative 1, and the radius is equal to 2. And that's the circle that you can see drawn right there in front of you. Let's jump right into an example. Find the equation of a circle with center negative 3 comma 4 and radius equal to 6. Graph the circle by hand and then state the domain and the range. So what we know is that we have a, in a circle with a center of negative 3 comma 4 and a radius of 6. So that equation would look like this. x minus negative 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 6 squared. Simplify that just a little bit. This becomes x plus 3 quantity squared, y minus 4 quantity squared equals 36. All right, so let's take and graph this by hand. So my set of axes, I'm going to draw here. And I know that the center is negative 3 comma 4. So negative 3 comma 4 is approximately right here. And I know that the radius is 6. So let's take and graph a few points with radius of 6. So if I go 6 units in this direction, that's going to take me to the point 3 comma 4. If I go 6 units in this direction, it's going to take me to the point negative 9 comma 4. If I go 6 units in this direction, it's going to take me to the point negative 3 comma 10. And if I go 6 units down, it's going to take me to the point negative 3 comma negative 2. And so my circle needs to go through those points. And I got a little bit of a lopsided circle here, but that gives me my radius of 6. So that's an example of drawing the circle and graphing it by hand. The domain and range. Well, the domain are the x values. And we can see that it starts here at negative 9 inclusive 
and goes over to there, three inclusive. The range are the y values, and we can see it starts at negative two, inclusive, and it goes up to positive 10, inclusive. Let's do another example, and the example is the same exact problem, graph, but this time we're going to graph it using the graphing calculator. So we're going to take x plus 3 squared, quantity squared, plus y minus 4 quantity squared equals 36. So let's go to the graphing calculator and take a look at what it would be like trying to graph this using the graphing calculator. All right, for the graphing calculator, what we're going to be doing is using an emulator software. It's software that looks like a TI-84+, plus, but it also has the same window of output as well as all of the same keypad as a TI-83+. Plus. So we will be operating with TI-84+, plus or TI-83+. Plus. This large screen is the output window that is on your graphing calculator. Over here, I have the key strokes for entering the equation. And what we have to remember is that a circle is not a function, but what we have to do is solve it so that we can graph it as a function. And we'll see what that looks like as we go through this, these keystrokes. The first thing I want to do is set up the window for the correct size. So the minimum for x is going to be 14.4. The minimum for, I'm sorry, the maximum for x is going to be 4.4. The scale will leave it 1. The minimum for y is going to be negative 2. And the maximum for y is going to be 10.4. Now, let's enter the equation. And the equation, of course, is going to be equal to 4 plus the square root of 36 minus x plus 3 quantity squared, and then close the parentheses to show that that's the quantity underneath the square root. But now we have to graph y equals 4 minus the square root of the quantity 36 minus the quantity x plus 3 squared. And then we have to close the parentheses to show that that's all underneath the square root. And when we go to graph it, we get our circle drawn as two semicircles, a top half and a bottom half. And I think you can see that in this particular case, that the graphing calculator was not necessarily easier than doing it by hand. So now what I'd like to do is look at one more example of the circle and a little bit more detail of what happens if it's not in standard form. So for example, decide whether x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 10y plus 25 is equal to, I'm sorry, is, is, is equal to 0, is the circle has a circle as its graph. Now, when you look at that, you may not necessarily be able to tell that it's a circle right away. So you look at the important things are that the coefficients on x squared here and y squared there are the same. And in this particular case, they happen to be the understood one. And now, what I'm going to do is complete the square on the x, complete the square on the y's, and take a look at the resulting equation. All right, so let's go to the chalkboard, and we will write out that original equation of x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 10y plus 25 equals 0. And I'm going to rewrite that so as it's set up to do completing the square for both of these. So 
I'm going to give myself a little bit more space and write x squared minus 6x plus blank and then plus y squared plus 10y. Then I'm going to do plus blank equals negative 25. And that's just subtracting 25 from both sides. So here, for the x, I take the 6 divided by 2, which gives me 3, and then I square it. So 3 squared is what I need to add to complete the square. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is what I need to add here, which means on the right-hand side, I need to add 9 and I need to add 25. Well, of course, those will cancel each other out. What I get here is x minus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 5 quantity squared equals 3 squared. And so, yes, in fact, that is the equation of a circle. And in particular, it has center 3, comma, negative 5, and it has a radius equal to 3. All right. Now, let's examine in more detail the parabola. A parabola with a vertical axis is the set of all points in a plane equidistant from a fixed point and a fixed line. The fixed point is called the focus. The fixed line is called the directrix. A parabola with a vertical axis has the following equation. x squared is equal to 4cy. And the focus is 0, comma, c. The directrix is y is equal to negative c. And it has a vertical axis, which is x is equal to 0. And then you can see from these two diagrams, if c is positive, then the parabola opens in the upwards direction. And if c is negative, then it opens in the downward direction. Let's look at a parabola with a horizontal axis. In this case, the equation is y squared equals 4 times cx. The focus would be c comma 0, and the directrix would be x is equal to negative c. It has a horizontal axis of y equals 0, and it will open to the right if c is positive, which is this graph here, and it opens to the left when c is negative. I think it's best if we look at some examples of parabolas. So let's do an example where we find the focus, the directrix, and the vertex, as well as the axis of the parabola for the equation x squared is equal to 8y. Let's start by writing that on the board. x squared is equal to 8y. Of course, this has the form of x squared is equal to 4 times c. So we would, c times, sorry, 4c times y. So we would set 4c equal to 8. And that tells me that c is equal to 2. Since the x term is squared, it is a vertical parabola. The focus will be 0, 2, 0, c, but we just calculated c to be 2. The directrix would be y equals negative 2. The vertex is 0, 0. And the axis of the parabola is the y-axis. So now we can graph this parabola. We know the vertex is 0, 0. We know the focus is 0, 2. And the directrix is the line y equals negative 2. And so our parabola opens um, in the upward direction because 
C, of course, was positive, and that's the focus. And here's our vertex. So our parabola looks like this. Okay. Now what I want to do is kind of do it the other way around. Let's look at trying to write the equation for a parabola. So write the equation of the parabola that has a focus of 2 thirds comma 0 and a vertex at the origin. Well, let me write down focus is 2 thirds comma 0 and the vertex and the focus are both on the x-axis. And that means that the parabola is horizontal. It opens to the right because the focus is to the right of the vertex. And that's what tells us that it would open to the right. The vertex, remember, is the origin, which is 0, 0. OK. So the axis for the parabola will then be the x-axis. And what we want to do now is graph the, oh, I'm sorry, we're trying to find the equation. So what we know is that it has to take the form y squared is equal to 4cx. And what we know is that, um, y squared is equal to 4 times, well, c is equal to the 2 thirds. And so 4 times 2 thirds times the x, and then y squared will be equal to 8 thirds times x. And that would be the equation of that parabola. Well, the next thing I want to look at with you is translations of parabolas. So parabolas that are not going to have their vertex at the origin. So equation forms for translated parabolas that have a vertical axis. A parabola with the vertex h comma k and a vertical axis has the equation of the form x minus h quantity squared is equal to 4c times the quantity y minus k. The focus this time is h comma k plus c. The directrix is y is equal to k minus c. The vertical axis is x is equal to h. And it opens up if c is positive, And it opens down if c is negative. Well, let's take a look at equation forms for translated parabolas with the horizontal axis. And in this case, it has the same vertex h k. This time the axis is horizontal, and the equation would have the form y minus k quantity squared is equal to 4c times the quantity x minus h. The focus this time is h plus c comma k, and the directrix is x is equal to h minus c. The horizontal axis is y is equal to k. It opens to the right if c is positive, and it opens to the left if c is negative. Let's take a look at an example. We're going to graph by hand the parabola that x equals negative 1 8 times the quantity y plus 3 squared plus 2. We will label the vertex, the focus, and the directrix. Okay, so let's write that equation on the board, and then let, we're going to have to rewrite it in a form that's going to allow us to graph it. So we have x is equal to negative 1 8, then parentheses for the quantity y plus 3 squared plus 2. So I'm going to rewrite the equation so that it's in a different form. So I'm going to subtract 2 from the x. I'm also going to multiply by negative 8. So I'm going to have negative 8 parentheses x minus 2 is equal to y plus 3 quantity squared. And what I now know from this is that the vertex is equal to 2 comma negative 3. I know that we can take 4c 
and that's going to equal negative 8. So I know that C is negative 2. And what that means is that the parabola opens to the left. The focus is two units to the left of the vertex, which means that the focus is equal to 0, comma, negative 3. The directrix is going to be two units to the right of the vertex, so that means the directrix is x equals 4. Now we can graph this. And we know that the vertex is 2, negative 3. We know that the focus is 0, negative 3. The focus is here. We know the directrix is x equals 4. And so the parabola will look like this. It opens to the left, the focus, vertex, and directrix all lined up. Now what I'd like to do is to write the equation for the translation of a parabola. So write an equation for the parabola with focus 2, comma 2 and vertex negative 1, comma 2. Graph it and then state the domain and the range. So the focus is 2, comma 2 and the vertex is negative 1 comma 2. All right, well the focus is to the right of the vertex. So the axis is horizontal and this parabola opens to the right. The distance between the focus and the vertex would be 2 minus a minus 1, which is 3. And that means that C is equal to 3. The equation of the parabola, then, would be y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 4 times c times the quantity x minus a negative 1. So simplifying that a little bit, we get y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 12 times x plus 1. To graph that by hand, the vertex is negative 1, comma 2. The focus is 2, comma 2. The directrix would be back here at x is equal to negative 4, and our parabola, as we said, would be opening to the right-hand side, and that would then look like this. And in terms of its domain and range, well, we can see that the domain starts here at negative 1 and goes out to infinity. So the domain is negative 1 to infinity. The range, of course, these are going to continue forever and ever, so the range is going to be negative infinity to infinity. All right, that was great. And now it's time for you to try a problem. I would like you to do the following example. Write an equation for a parabola with a focus of negative 1, 3 and a directrix of y equals 7. Pause the video to work on this problem, and when you are finished, restart the video to check your solution. Let's find out how you did on this problem. You were given the information that the focus was equal to one, negative 1, comma 3, and that the directrix 
was y equals 7. Okay. What that means is since the focus is underneath the directrix, the parabola opens downward. The distance between the focus and the directrix, if we look at this, 7 minus 3 is 4. So that means that c is equal to negative 2. That gives us a vertex, a vertex which will equal negative 1, comma, 5. The equation of the parabola will then be x minus a negative 1 quantity squared is equal to 4 times c, which is negative 2, times the quantity y minus 5. Over here, it simplifies to x plus 1 quantity squared equals negative 8 times the quantity y minus 5. And that would be the equation of the parabola that I hope you also came up with. Great. In this lesson, we explored circles and parabolas in detail. Be sure to work the exercises that your teacher assigns, and we'll see you next time.